So in the last video, we looked at the different types of deviations. We talked about having total deviation and partitioning that total deviation from the mean into two parts. One part that we can explain with the response variable x and one part that we cannot explain with the response variable that is the unexplained deviation also known as the residual. Responses predicted by the model for an individual often differ from the actual response. That is, we often have a residual. The residual is unaccounted for by the model and represents the error of the model. So you remember back when I showed you this equation here that I talked about how y hat was in the equation rather than y because what we would predict is going to be different than what we observe. But there's another way now that we can write it, now that we've talked about the residual. And that is that the actual observation, y, can be thought of as what we predict plus the unexplained part or the residual part. So if we take the regression equation we see here, b0 plus b1 times x, where b0 is the intercept, coefficient and b1 is the slope coefficient, x is the, re, is the explanatory variable. If we now take that as the predicted part and add in the unexplained part, that leads us to the actual observation that we have y. Now, of course, you don't know what that residual is until you look at your observation. So you have to actually obtain your prediction and your observation. So this is just really showing you the relation between these. It's not showing you a new way to arrive at your observation because you can't calculate E without having the observation. So this is just a mathematical equivalency that helps us understand regression, helps us understand it as an explained part here and an unexplained part, that residual piece. Now, what we can do with these different types of deviations is we can actually create variation measures, variation estimates, which we call sums of squares. So the sums of squares based upon the mean, this piece, right here, which we're going to call the total sums of squares, or sum of squares total, or as I'm drawing here an abbreviation, SST. That total sums of squares, if you think about when you were to look at the standard deviation, that total sums of squares is involved in the standard deviation formula. Remember that when we calculated the standard deviation, we started by taking the deviations from the mean, we'd square them, we'd add them all up, then we would divide by the degrees of freedom and take the square root, or if we want to talk about variance without the square root, we do this whole thing again without the square root. So this really is looking at a variation or variance about the mean, and note that the numerator is what we're now calling the total sums of squares. So we're very interested in the variation of our values. That is, in fact, the essence of science. The question becomes, why do we get different values for, in our example we're looking at now, for mortality rates? Why do we get different values for the different states? That's the question. And so what we're doing here is we're looking at the variation and now partitioning that variation just like we partition the deviations. We're partitioning the variation into two parts. The variation that can be explained, which we're going to call that because it's due to the model, we're going to call that sums of squares for the model. That is what is explained by our model 
basically in our example we're using a model in which we explain mortality rate from the latitude of the state the geographic center of the state so this is the portion of this sums of squares this variation that we can obtain from the model or that the total variation the portion we can obtain from the model and then the portion that's not explained if you notice here inside we have right here that's the residual so we're taking all the residuals and we're squaring them up and that is our sum of squares error so we have sum of squares due to the model sum of squares error if you add them together that's the total sums of squares that is the total variation about the mean and so this whole process here of trying to understand why we have variation, we've now introduced one reason for that. The reason we have variation in mortality is in part due to latitude. Well, how much of it is due to latitude? That's here in the sums of squares of our model. And how much of it is not due to latitude? That here is in our residuals. So when we square and add those up, the sums of square error. So going back now to that example that we had, when we looked at the, um, the, the various elements of the model, let me see if I can get back to it again. If we looked at those various elements of the model here, the sums of squares error is simply taking all of these residuals and squaring them and adding them up. The sums of squares for the model is the difference between our predicted and the mean value. So if we were to calculate the mean, which we could do real easily over here, if we were to calculate the mean for the uh, mortality rate, there it is, 152.8776. If we were to take that and then subtract that from each of those fitted values, which I could do that. I could even make another column showing those. Those are the deviations that are explained and we could square those and add them all up and that would give us the deviation or the sums of squares for the model. And if we take those two sums of squares and add them together, that's the same as taking the deviation of every observation of mortality minus the mean squared and adding them up. That is the numerator of our standard deviation and variance statistics. So all of this ties together with, the, with a good model having lots of sums of squares in the model portion. So we want to look at that relative sums of squares the model to the explained. And so that's what I'm going to do here in the next part. Here are the associated sums of squares. And I have a command here, a function called ANOVA. ANOVA. ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. So I want to do an analysis of variance using that skin model where we are modeling mortality as a function of latitude. And let's see what happens here when I get this. What happens is that I end up with what's called an analysis of variance table. And here is the sums of squares for our model. Here is the sums of squares residual. And if I were to add up the sums of squares for the model and the sums of squares residual, Let's see what I get. I get 36464 plus 17173, and that's my total sums of squares. 53637 is my total sums of squares. Let me just try something here. Let's take the standard deviation for mortality. Oh, I need to have my data set in there, skin mortality, the standard deviation for mortality, there it is. What happens if I were to square that? Let's go ahead and square that standard deviation for mortality. Okay, and that would then become the variance. And what if I was to take that variance 
and multiply it by n minus one. Well, my data set has 49 observations in it. And so that's n. So n minus one would be 48. And I get n a. Uh, let's see, what did I do wrong? Oh, I see what I did wrong. I need to have the standard deviation uh, um, all in parentheses to make sure that it's not trying to square the thing before I've taken the standard deviation. There. Now that's the variance and now times 48 and I'm still getting an A. Uh, what is wrong? Oh, it says Mort not found. What is it called? Oh, it's capital M. Capital M. Let's try this again. So I think I had done it okay the first time except that I needed a capital M. R is case sensitive. For those of you new to R, this was a unintentional learning experience. There we go. All right. So what? Why did I do that? I took look at the look at the formula again that we had here. I took and squared the standard deviation. Here's standard deviation. I squared it to get the variance and multiplied by n minus one. And what would I be left with? the total sums of squares. So if I go back over here, I see that I got five, three, six, three, seven, and notice what I had up here, five, three, six, three, seven, when I added up the sums of squares model for residual. So again, I'm just demonstrating you the connection and demonstrating empirically what we showed mathematically. So what's really of interest here is how these partition and how much is accounted for by our model. So I think I'm going to stop there for the moment and in the next videos you'll see me taking these sums of squares and looking at that ratio a little bit more formally and calculating statistics based upon those ratios. We also still have some work to do to find out what is meant by these other labels here in the analysis of variance table. Also, I remember I still have some leftover pieces to talk about up here. I didn't talk about this. I didn't talk about these pieces. So we will do all that in our upcoming videos.